Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area, and I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today I thought I'd do a fun video. I actually just filmed another video, but then I was like, I got the fire in the belly and I was like, I was reading some of these responses on the community tab here on YouTube and I just want to film this video so much. This is my assumptions about professional organizers video. I asked you guys in the community tab, I, asked you guys, I also asked you guys on Instagram about what assumptions you had about professional organizers and uh, if I could like debunk them or confirm them. <laughs> So if you don't know me, I'm a professional home organizer as well as a professional singer here in Boston and I have been helping people organize their homes and offices and whatever since 2013 and I consider myself a professional so um, and I know a lot of other professional organizers we have a like little network here in the Boston area and you know uh, in other places as well and I know a lot about those ladies as well I don't know a lot of male professional organizers I feel like it's a field that's dominated by women right now um, if you know any male professional organizers leave a comment down below I feel like it's very very heavily female dominated right now but I'm gonna hop onto my community tab right now and you guys came with the responses. I expected maybe like 10, 15. No, you guys came with 57. And then there was some on Instagram too, which I don't know if I'm gonna get to. So um, thank you so much for responding. I was very surprised, but I'm gonna get to some of these. I don't know how many I can get to, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get to them. And disclaimer, I'm only answering these questions for myself and things that I know about other professional organizers. So I cannot speak for all of us, of course, um, but I will speak for me and uh, what I know about my colleagues. So let's get into it. Ooh, it's gonna be juicy. Can you see the bean in the background there? He's like so tired. I took him on a walk today and like played in the hall. He's like super exhausted, which is what we like. A happy dog is a tired dog, right? Am I right? Professional organizers are really expensive. <laughs> Just assuming, of course. So I'm going to be 100% honest with you and saying that I think, I think personally, yes, it's expensive. Um, it really mostly depends on where you live and who you're getting to do the job for you. Um, if you're getting, you know, a student, someone who hasn't been doing it very long, you're probably going to be uh, charged less than if you're getting somebody who's seasoned, who's been doing it for a while, who even has the CPO in front of their name, or I think it's beside the name, I don't know, it's front and behind. There is a certification that you can get from NAPO. Uh, when I first started working as a professional organizer, I was charging very little. Like I, um, actually the way that I started was I partnered up with, I was on, oh, what is the name of that? It's not Groupon, but the other one. Living Social, I did a, a special on Living Social just to get out there and get experience. Living Social takes, they ask you to charge like half your rate and then they take half your money. So you really don't get anything financially out of it. It's really not like, financially it's not a good thing, but I was doing that. And then I was, after that, I did that for a while to get experience, I was going out to see clients and I had several clients tell me that I was not charging enough for my services. So I had a little bit of like that imposter syndrome of like, oh, am I really helping? But people really seemed grateful. You know what? Yeah, I think it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> this is one I got several times. So that I have a secret Monica closet somewhere. <laughs> No, it's funny because Friends is like so much, Friends is back like in trending like, but I watched Friends when it was on like in the 90s. And I know that like the Monica closet is the secret closet that has like all of the crap just thrown in there and it's really messy. Um, I do assume that a lot of people who have uh, organizing careers and who organize for a living do have a space in their home that's like a mess. Um, and I think, and I do have a space, I, I have several spaces in my home which I'm not like really proud to show off. Um, I don't really have like a Monica closet where it's like a disaster, but I have spaces where I'm just like, oh, it could be better. I think it's because I love to organize so much that I leave spaces undone on purpose so I can do them later. <laughs> so this one had several, but I'm gonna just adjust, just gonna address the first one. So it says um, that their house is, house is perfect and they judge anyone who isn't organized. I know for me alone, that is not true. Um, I mean, my house is pretty good and um, that is what I aim for when I work with other people is pretty good or good enough. So perfect is something that is, uh, to me, unattainable. I, d I don't think. I know Marie Kondo says you can aim for perfect, but like I don't, I don't see how you would get there because your house is so dynamic. Things are always changing. Your life is changing. Um, so, but when I when I go to other people's houses, though, I have a completely 
objective lens. I don't go in there and judge their stuff because it's not my stuff. And it's not my job to go there and judge their stuff. It's my job to go in there and help them function. Because my job is to intervene with the relationship between the person and their stuff. The space in between, which I, I, I call it the space between. Um, and if the space between is dysfunctional, it's my job to find out what's wrong in the space between and try to repair that relationship. Whether it, re it involves decluttering some of their stuff, organizing some of their stuff, um, or even grabbing um, organized solutions, or just helping them um, feel like they can let go of items that are not helping them in their lives. It's, it's my job to solve the relationship and not to deal so much with the things. I feel like it's my job to deal with things, but it's not a lot about the things. So I'm not there to judge. I, I've walked into places where it's, com it's a complete mess. I've seen rat droppings, I've seen mouse droppings, I've seen bugs, I've seen like, th like things. I don't have a feeling of judgment there. I have a feeling of I wanna help this person improve their relationship with their surroundings because I believe strongly that your surroundings can really affect how you feel about your day, how you feel about your life, how you feel about the relationships with other people. It is a very prominent character in your story and um, I want to improve your relationship with that character. So that's what I think of. I don't usually walk in there with a judgmental eye. Um, and maybe that sounds very like rose colored glasses, but it's really, it's really the way that I function. <laughs> They get annoyed in the grocery checkout line as the person bagging their groceries puts bananas, ice cream, and hand lotion in the same bag. Or is that just me? <laughs> I've, no I've never actually noticed that. I've never noticed that. But what if you're only buying those things? What do you do then? <laughs> that's a funny one. I like that one, though. I assume they would get more excited to work on a super messy space than one that's moderately organized. I think they would like the challenge. I think... That's definitely true. <laughs> that they have a hard time turning off the how could this be organized better part of their brain. They're always trying to find out new and different solutions for themselves and for their clients. That is true. It's pretty much the reason that I've organized spaces more than once um, in my home, at least. When I'm with clients, I, I like to try to get them to the final solution. Um, sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes they'll try something for a while, doesn't work for them. I'm back and we try something else, but in my house, uh, I do like to experiment with other solutions and see how well they work. It helps me. It's kind of like my my house is kind of like my laboratory. <laughs> and I get to try on different solutions and different methods of organizing. And if I find something that's absolutely genius, I'll tell everybody about it and I'm really excited. Um, and sometimes I'll try things that I thought would be great and they just they ended up not working. Um, a lot of it is trial and error, and I do think that this is my laboratory. So um, yes, I'm always trying new things, and I'm always like reorganizing and like trying something different, so it's, cause it's fun. One says, having OCD, can't imagine living any other way. <laughs> so to talk really seriously for a second, I know there's a lot of people like, that you shouldn't talk about OCD in a way that it means like hyper-organized, and you probably shouldn't nowadays. I do happen to have a form of OCD that does not involve putting items in places. So I mean, it mostly involves like obsessive thoughts um, about, and it has nothing to do with organizing. I have been formally diagnosed by a psychiatrist with OCD. I have, I'm in cognitive behavior therapy about it. I do sort of cope with it. Um, it's something that I've had to live with for a number of years. Um, but I, yes, I do have OCD, but it has nothing to do with organizing. So <laughs> that's a weird, that's a weird answer, I guess. Um, and I don't think most organizers have OCD in a way that they are obsessively, you know, they have to have everything like in, in neat little rows. I think it's more about function with most of us than it is about, um, you know, having everything line up and perfect. As someone said, they must be kind and patient like you. Thank you for saying that, by the way. Um, I. Most organizers that I know are very patient people. And that is a personality trait that you probably should have if you are helping people organize. It takes people sometimes a long time to make decisions about items and you might have to sit there for five minutes and talk about whether or not a receipt is something that they should keep or something that they should get rid of. I, sometimes I feel a lot like a therapist and I feel like people will tell me a lot of things that don't involve the stuff but there's a lot of stuff in stuff, if you know what I mean. So um, it, it does help you to be very patient and very, um, and I feel like a lot of people should be kind, but um, definitely you should be kind to those you're working with because uh, when I'm in people's homes, they're, let, they're letting me in a very intimate 
space that their home is it's private there's a lot of it's, your home is basically an extension of you i should be i should respect the fact that they let me into their space and into their privacy and everything i mean i've seen all kinds of things all kinds of things so um it just does help to be patient and kind i believe that they get a sense of personal and professional pride when a job is successful is successfully completed to both their and their clients total satisfaction absolutely assumption they want everybody's organization to be the same no individualism this is not true for me at least i and i don't think it's true for others as well um because uh to in order to be successful um, you do need to recognize that everyone is an individual. There are different kinds of people who deal with items differently. And I think I think Cass from Clutterbug talks about this a lot in her book. I haven't read the book. I heard it's really amazing. But um, so there are people who, these are pilers, there's filers, there's people who want to fold clothes, there's people who want to hang clothes. You have to work with whatever behavior your client exhibits and is not going to stray from. I assume they must have studied a bit of, co to, of how to coaching psychology in order to know how to deal with different personalities. Or maybe they don't. Love your channel. Thank you, Elizabeth. I have personally not studied psychology. I think it's a really important part of my continuing education, which I will do because I am a, I am an advocate of lifetime learning. I will never stop making no, new neural pathways ever. Um, but I think that I have a lot of experience in dealing with people. I used to work in retail management. <laughs> so I, I'm used to dealing with, you know, customer facing issues, which if you've ever worked in any kind of um, customer situation, you know that it's can be very special and dealing with um, employees that are, that are reporting to you. So I, the, it's a very sort of special balance in the world of like, dynamics and dealing with people. Um, but I do, I do believe that you do have to have some sort of general knowledge about how to deal with different personalities. And you know what, sometimes it just doesn't work out between me and the client. Like sometimes our personalities will like not mesh up and I won't be the right organizer for them. That you need some kind of certification level of experience for clients to take you seriously as a professional organizer. Mm. So having CPO next to your name, that is something I talked about earlier in the video, probably does make clients take you more seriously, which is why I'm considering adding that. Um, however, uh, you don't have to have it, which kind of upsets me a little bit because I, I've gone to so much school. I have two degrees in music. I, have, um, I went to a pre-med program and I, again, I'm an advocate of lifetime learning, but there's no like professional organizing course that I can take to become certified. There are uh, now, I guess, organizations that offer courses. I think that Marie Kondo has one, maybe Home Edit has one. I think that they're developing those sorts of programs. If you, if you want to go into the field, you don't have to do these things. You can just start. I think that all professional organizers want to create these Pinterest, Instagram pantries or closets which look good, but don't work in real life. I enjoy this because um, I personally, do like the look of like really perf perfectly organized things with like matching tops and you know everything however this again does not always function i okay i'm an advocate of function over form uh most of the time when i'm working with clients like a lot of the time if i'm with clients and i'm like can i take before after pictures the after picture might not look better than the before picture but with the client it works better and it functions better for them and it's not it doesn't look like pinterest so that's re and the, this the before and after pictures that i've taken i've usually staged um and they and they look really I mean, sometimes i've taken items out of the of the space to make it look less cluttered to take that after picture and i know a lot of organizers will tell you this if if you go up to them and they're honest um i like my spaces to look really pretty um, not all of them look really pretty. Some of them just look kind of mediocre, but they work for us. So that is that for me, that is at least something I don't want to aspire to with a client, but if it gets there, I'm proud of it and I like it. <laughs> I'll take a picture of it. They get enjoyment for help from helping others organize. Yes, I do get enjoyment. Otherwise I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I, I get enjoyment from it. I get enjoyment from doing it for myself. I just, 
I think it's, I don't know, it's one of the most therapeutic things you can do, I think, is just like to help somebody. I just, I love more helping, the helping rather than like doing the space, um, because that is, gives me the most, it like lights a little fire in my heart and I love it so much. I think professional organizers are therapists at heart. <laughs> you know what, that might be true. Um, it might be true. I had, I did think about being a therapist when I was younger, uh, but I didn't, I didn't go that way. Who knows? It's not too late, man. That they see a lot of waste, uh, things that were never purchased that were never used. I, that's true. I do see a lot of. I mean, not, not. I try not to say waste because they. I do like to to move these items on to other people who will use them. Um, but I do see a lot of things with tags. I do see a lot of things that were never taken out of the packaging. I do see a lot of things that were used once and never used again. Um, and it all comes from either like impulsive shopping or just not being able to find the item or just, you know, mostly from impulsive shopping, but I do see a lot of things that just aren't used and it's, it's, it's a lot. Professional organizers are for rich people who have beautiful larger homes and that they will judge me and everything I do. <laughs> I will say most of my clients are actually uh, middle-class people. Um, who don't have tons of money to spend on, um, you know, things like luxurious services. However, um, these are people who have taken a look at their space and valued how much time and money they're losing being disorganized and have determined that the cost of hiring me is going to be better than staying disorganized and losing all kinds of money and time. Because, or being disorganized actually does cost you money and time. Um, Often I find when I'm in when I'm in people's houses, this is the best thing. When I'm in people's houses, I always find money when I'm looking through their things, and I always gather the money and I'm like, let's see how much we found at the end of the session. <laughs> I found checks for like hundreds of dollars, um, hundred dollar bills, um, all kind. Of, I mean, coins from everywhere. What these people lose in money and time, I feel like is worth it to them to hire me. Um, and it's worth the expense. So most of my clients are middle class, and no, I will not judge you in everything you do. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more because this video is getting really long. If you guys want a part two, I will definitely do a part two because there are definitely more in here that I did not get to. But I just wanna end with one that I thought was really important to talk about. Be rolling their eyes wondering how people think one consultation will solve 10 years of disorganization. <laughs> this one I think is really close to my heart because I do, uh, I, I do have to emphasize when I'm with people for the first time that um, one session with me is probably not going to solve all of your bad habits that you may have developed over the years, especially if the project involves documents. That is something that is incredibly time consuming because you can't just take a bunch of documents and put them into the shredder. You have to go through them, make sure there's not any personal identifying information on there, social security numbers, phone numbers, credit card numbers, uh, routing numbers for each. It's just, there's a lot of sensitive stuff that I have to look at to make sure that it just gets shredded. Does this just get thrown away? It's a very time consuming. So, um, having me come like one time um, is probably not going to be the jam that's gonna get your, I'm not gonna wave a magic wand and have your house to be completely organized. It is very time consuming. However, um, one consultation online with me is probably enough to get started. Okay, you guys, there were a lot more where it came from. I didn't get to the Instagram ones, but if you guys want me to do a part two, part two just let me know down in the comment below and um, I will see you in the next video, whenever that is. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great morning, great afternoon, wherever you are, and evening. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Did he move? Did it, where? Oh! <laughs> oh man. Rough day, huh? Yeah, you had a hard day at work, didn't you? Yeah, rough times. Rough times. <laughs> you look so sleepy. You're a mess. All right, I'll let you go back to sleep. <laughs> okay. All right, go back to sleep.